So yeah, a lot of people have asked me for tips on how to aim and like they want me to teach them how to like hit more shots but that's something you have to learn by yourself but there's like these pitfalls that you can do that make it way harder for you to learn to hit your shots and you know like the basic stuff like you shouldn't have uh, a too high of a sensitivity on your mouse you should like you should feel comfortable with like how your hand rests on the mouse so you pretty much forget about it so it's like everything becomes automatic and with the confidence i mean like you need to think you need to believe that you can you will hit the shot that you're taking but if you're thinking about for example wow well we lost the first team fight we got rolled and I was one win away from diamond but it doesn't look like we're gonna win that means you're already digging yourself into a hole you could spend all that time on analyzing what's actually happening in the present moment instead of thinking about the past it's kind of like kind of zen but you know it's it it has helped me a lot in terms of uh, getting my aim to become better. Another pitfall that people do is you focus on your teammates' mistakes. You're like, oh no, our our uh, Anna got picked off. So what happens essentially is your Anna gets picked off and then that means you have to make up for the fact that you have no main healer, which means you need to immediately get a pick as they, start, as they start rushing in. But if you're thinking about how it's like, wow, our Anna just got picked off, like that's irrelevant. Well, you should be thinking about, okay, where are they gonna come in from? And you should like have this game sense in your head that, okay, our Anna got picked off, that means they're gonna rush main since that's where the that's the closest entrance to the point so you're gonna instead of being a baby rage you're gonna think about okay i'm gonna put my crosshair into the correct position and wait for them to come in so that instead of having my crosshair wherever it's as close to the place where it needs to be when i release the arrow but like if your crosshair is far away from the spot from the choke point where the enemy team is gonna come in from, then you need to like fast you need to move your crosshair there fast, plus you're gonna get like surprised that they're coming in from the choke point because you didn't mentally ready yourself since you were complaining about how your Anna died. Like you you don't necessarily have to like complain to your team just the fact that you're thinking like oh no our Anna died oh my god it's gonna be so hard to win this team fight that makes it even harder to win the team fight so just focus on what's actually happening which kind of contradicts what I just said but like focus on the present moment like the fact that the Anna died that's in the past well what's actually in the present moment is that you're on a you're on a disadvantage which means the enemy team is going to charge in now so you're going to put your crosshair to the correct position and this way you maximize your chances of actually hitting those shots you could like once that part becomes automatic you can even like just keep building your game sense so for example when your Anna gets picked off you automatically put your crosshair onto the choke point because that's what always happens when your Anna gets picked off they charge from the closest choke point in and then you can start thinking well maybe I should back up to the high ground while keeping my crosshair in the correct position so that I'm in a more defensive position and I'll be able to dish out more damage before I die. Or maybe it will even bait them to go for me instead of trying to cap the point. And it might give us like one extra second, which means that maybe 
they get one less tick from the point. So I have like a couple of clips here, or, or one, to show you guys. I put it the slow-mo. So here it's like we, they capped the point. And I put the, I know that they're charging in already, since they only had, uh, they only had one person on the point here. So I put the Sonic to the middle choke point. And I see that nothing appears, but I know that they have pushed forward. And I remember from last round that the one of them, I think it was the Reaper, likes to flank from here. And what better time for him to like go for the slow flank than when he's like already in a position and he still has to wait for his teammates. So I just immediately move my crosshair to where I think he will be. Even though I didn't hear him, I didn't see him. It's just like the only thing I can do at that point. I have two options. I can think about how we just lost the first point and it sucks. Or I can think about how to maximize the things I can do. So I put my crosshair here and I position myself behind this cover since they also had a widow that might uh, peek from the left side because that's what she did last time plus that's what uh, widows usually do. Like they peek from the left side or the main choke point. So that means I'm covered from the widow and there's like no one that can shoot at me so I can relax and completely focus on trying to shoot people that go through this choke point. Like even though it's an insanely difficult shot to hit, it's like I could think about that. I could think about how I'm most likely not gonna hit that shot, but that would mean that I wouldn't be this focused and my crosshair would be wherever and I wouldn't be hiding from the widow and stuff because I wouldn't be focusing on the game. I would be focusing on the fact that I think it's probably not gonna hit. Like I'm probably gonna miss that shot. But that's irrelevant. You don't have to think about stuff like that. You just do the best you take you, you take the best possible choice that you can think of. Why crouching? It makes me even a smaller target. So what happens is that, you know, I was correct. The Reaper is going for the flank. And even though there's like such a tiny window, it's like I need perfect uh, reflexes. You know, as soon as I see the target, like I need to calculate everything. I need to calculate the arrow flight time. But like, it's not like I flip out the calculator, like, oh, okay. Uh, so it's like, I think that's like half a meter. Plus, I, I think I'm 15 meters away. The arrow flies at uh, 120 meters. <clears throat> so that's going to be like uh, 15 divided by 120 times one second. Like, that's not what I'm doing. It's like, I'm just thinking about my reaction time. It's like, it's, it's, it's the average reaction time for gamers like 210 milliseconds. So that means I need to put my crosshair to the, the position where I need to shoot 210 milliseconds after I see my target. Because that's when my reaction time kicks in and I let go of the arrow. So I position the crosshair to where I think the Reaper will be when I release the arrow 210 milliseconds after I see him, plus the time it takes for the arrow to reach the distance where the Reaper is. So there you go, I hit the shot. It, it was like I was surprised that I hit it, but I still did hit it because I did everything possible that there is to prepare myself for that shot. So this is like 0 
speed. So let's look at it at one 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 x speed. So it's like I just take into account the reaction time plus the arrow travel time. So it looks like a ridiculously hard shot, but it doesn't have to be. Like obviously there there can be a high chance that you miss it, but that's irrelevant. You should always just focus on trying to make every single shot hit to the best of your abilities. And the more you do this, the less you have to rely on like flicks and muscle memory because you're just like you preemptively position your crosshair, you preemptively think about where your target is going to be, which makes your reaction time faster because you're not surprised. Like, you expect the Reaper to be here. Oh, oh. that's another fucking shot. Oh. And uh, then it's like I go forward. Let's put some sound first. Another fucking shot. Oh. That's just so there I hear the Anna on the left. Sound is also important when trying to aim. Another fucking shot the, that's just like... I can hear, like you guys hear the Anna on the left, right? Like it's in the left ear. The one that I showed you. On the left side. And I still hear, like it's like, okay, she's not moving at all. So I'm gonna go for her. Yo. So and there I see the Anna. I, I don't, I'm not sure if we, if she's going to jump down. So it's like, I know that it's just like a flip of a coin to see if I will hit this shot or not. So I don't shoot immediately. I'd, I, I wait for her to start moving to make my decision. So I know that she like, she starts moving to the right. And it's very unlikely that uh, she knows where I am. Or if she did hear me like I heard her, that means she's going to try to run away to her team. Plus, you know, like, they're pushing in. So there's no reason for the Anna to back up. So the only possible action there is, is she's going to go this way. So I know this way that the trajectory is going to be like this. So I can like move my crosshair. Like I, it's like I'm following her. And I know exactly which direction she's gonna go. So then I can line up the shot. And I know exactly how much time I have to line up the shot. Because I know where she's going. So let's look at it like full speed. Yo. Just like the one that I showed you guys. Yo. It's like, it looks like an insanely hard shot. And what makes it even more impressive is that like, I just did another one of those, like, like t five seconds ago. Like my, all my shots are connecting pretty much. Like this shot here, for example. Shot the, that's just like, there's nothing. I can't see anything. There's a lot of effects. So it's like I could, like there's no reason to aim. So I'm just gonna shoot my arrow where I think the targets will the one be. That I showed you guys. Yo, that's and then, then when there's like this shot that I just, it's like, it, it, it's a pick. It's more of a pick instead of just spamming. So I take my time Yo. because, you know, like I said before, I know where she's gonna go. And I can wait as long as possible before I line up the shot. So it's it's like you can make hard shots way easier by just building confidence so that you don't you stop yourself from focusing on useless stuff like how how you just lost the fight and here for example like you might be focusing on the previous shot like you might be still hyped 
about the reaper oh, yeah, shot here. There oh, you go. Oh, it's that, like it's like another fucking shot. Oh, the, that's just oh, like the one that I showed you guys. The fact that I'm just like hyped about the shot and stuff makes me not think about what's happening. So I won't do these calculations to hit things early. Like maybe. Another it's just I'm spamming here. Shot the. That's just like the one that I showed you guys. But then it's like I snap out of it. I go back into the focus mode. And then I get like. One. I get hyped and then I shut up because that's I know one. that I need to focus. I don't know. Uh, last time I made like a yeah. guide, people were complaining that I didn't show the full clip, so here, here you go. <laughs> that's another fucking shot, the, that's just like the one that I showed you guys. Yo, that's another one! That's another one! And like here you can see, the, it's like, normally I wouldn't hit the next shots because I'm like, thinking about how I just did a big play. But the more you do big plays, the less it affects you. Like, it, it sounds kind of like, well, why do you play games if you're not gonna get happy about hitting insane shots? But if you just wanna be top 500, if you wanna be the best version of yourself, the best gamer version, then you need to, like, relax and keep your cool. So it's like, I'm thinking, like, okay, the soldier is gonna go here. We got we got the kill, so he knows he's just staggering if he stays inside of this house. Or if he tries to run out from here. So his best course of action is to come out from here and maybe make it to safety or maybe die. So instead of chasing him or waiting for him to come back, I go like, well, I'm gonna turn to the right. and try to like release my shot as soon as my crosshair goes to this wall like i i don't even like think about where he is i don't care about where he is like i don't try to find the soldier before i release the arrow because i expect him to be running in a straight line when i peek the corner so that way i eliminate the reaction time because I anticipate the soldier to be here. So I just think while I'm walking to peek this corner. During this time I eliminate the reaction time by just deciding to shoot as soon as I am no longer behind the wall. But like if I if I had like relied on the fact that I'm gonna like suddenly see the soldier and then I'm gonna decide how to aim, then it would have taken me way longer. But I don't know. I, maybe I'm talking. F maybe I'm full of shit. It it does look like I was relying on reacting because I kept my crosshair here. So basically, what I should have done is anticipated the soldier to peak there so it's like or I I guess it's like I was surprised by the angle of the wall like I expected or I don't know it's it seems like I just wasn't focusing anymore I was at this point I was just thinking to myself wow this is such a huge play damn if I hit one more shot it's gonna be great like that's actually what I was thinking about I wasn't thinking about the game, I was thinking about how I just popped off hard. But I would have stolen that last kill and made the play even better if I had been thinking about what I explained earlier. I'm seeing myself on fresh nut if I hit this. Exactly! Like, that's, that's the problem with me, usually, when I do big plays. It's like, I do insane flicks, but then I fuck up because I'm like focusing on the fact that, you know, 
that's a fucking cool clip, dude. You know, like, I go with the Fresh Nuts surfer guy mode, where it's like, oh, this is such a, such a nice wave, dude, oh my god, it's so, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about, so, yeah. Like, here's one example. No! Here I was looking at, okay, it's overtime. Okay, I need to save my Anna. Wait, let's just look at the whole clip first. Get fucking owned! <laughs> so yeah, basically, here I'm like, I'm stunned. I'm looking at the chat while I'm stunned, like, come on dude, why the fuck am I looking at this chat or something? I should be thinking about what to do. So then I'm like, okay, well, who do I shoot now? I turn around to find a target, and it's like, okay, there's a Lucio there, so I try to react and hit it, but I miss, because I wasn't already thinking about it, like, I just, I started reacting instead of, like, trying to come up with a plan, since I was looking at the chat or worrying about getting stunned, or looking at how it's, like, you know, like, we're gonna lose this if if we lose this fight. So here... It's like, okay, Tracer... I, I snap out of it, there's like, Tracer is on the left side. I need to body block for our Anna to have even a small chance that she will survive. So... What I do is instead of readying my next arrow, I wait a bit so that I can move faster to stand in front of our Anna to maybe get lucky and block the incoming fire and maybe that gives the Anna like the one extra second time to live which let, lets her throw a nade now down and heal herself and maybe even hit the tracer in the process which would kill her provided that I will hit one body shot after blocking the next clip but you know like I couldn't predict where my Anna is gonna go so she didn't stay behind me and the tracer kills finishes her, her off so now I'm starting to get discouraged again I'm thinking like fuck dude we have so many dudes dead what are we gonna do like, if we, we lost this round man I'm so close to securing top 500 so look at how my, sh it's like, it's like then, I missed that shot. It's like, I'm not, like what I could have done, is she's, she went this direction, so I need to expect her to go for cover, since she's running out of blinks. So I should put my crosshair here. But since I'm worrying about shit, it's like I do this reactive flick. But I could have just played it calm and, you know, it, it was obvious that she's gonna go this way. So I could have easily hit that shot. And then it's like I snap out of it, I'm like, okay, it's useless to bitch about it. And... Uh, It's like, okay, she's gonna go right side. What I could do is, like, I guess I should go on the offensive since she might not expect me to peek really fast. Plus, she's low on blinks, which makes it easier for me to kill her. There's a smaller chance that she's gonna, like, blink out of my arrow. So I climb up, 
And at this point, I hear the you boo 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 boo. Its little brother is in my left ear screaming. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get bladed. I could just think that you know, okay, oh fuck, I'm, I'm gonna get bladed. It's gonna be hard to hit this shot, or I could think about the fact that, uh, like, look at here. It's like I could continue my movement to try to get as far away from the Genji as possible, use the momentum of grabbing the ledge to, like, keep propelling me forward, and then turn around and get ready to aim at the position where I think the Genji will be when, she, when he dashes me, or, you know, like, when he is about to swing me. So then it's like I do, I do hit the shot, like it's kind of, it looks like a reactive flick in a way, but like this is how I do like melee range shots. It's like I release the arrow in the middle of the flick and there's like high, like the hitbox is so huge, like there's, there's so much, like it doesn't even look that, like you don't even know how big the hitbox is, it's way bigger than the head. Whoops. So it's like I release the arrow here, and it's gonna hit the Genji because the hitbox is a tiny bit more forgiving than the actual. Like it's a bit bigger than the head, you know. So then I hit the shot. But if I was thinking about how it's gonna be hard to hit that shot, it would have been impossible to hit that shot. But I. Only thing I was thinking about is how to maximize my chances of hitting that shot. I, I was able to stay calm and think that how do I position myself here. No, you don't think less. You think the same amount, but you think about the correct stuff. You think about the things that matter, you know. You don't think about uh, winning or losing, you don't think about your teammates' mistakes, you just focus on what's actually happening and make decisions based on that. You focus on the present moment, you don't think about how it's gonna be hard, or it's, it's gonna, it's almost impossible to win, because then you're not gonna use the available brain power onto thinking about, okay, so I need to turn around, I, I know exactly where the Genji is because I heard the sounds, you know, I heard it from the sound that he's behind me. Plus, I move forward, which makes it more likely that the Genji is gonna like, it's, it's simple geometry, let me show you guys. It's like, this is me. Uh, oh, oh my god, it disappeared, well, it doesn't matter anymore. So, this is me. It's like a top-down geometrical view, and I I estimate that the Genji is like anywhere in here. But since here is a wall, and I'm gonna continue going this way, it it makes the angle where the Genji is smaller, because like suddenly I'm at this spot here, so even if the Genji was here, the Genji is still gonna be at this spot, because the Genji can't just continue going through the wall. So then I can just turn around and aim my crosshair to this blue spot, because the Genji is gonna be where I was, because that's the only, you know, like point of origin? It's like the only place that it's like the place where Genji has to go in order to keep chasing me. So I can turn around and ready myself to aim at this position because that's where Genji will be no matter where the Genji starts moving from. Like even if it starts moving from here or here, like it, they're all gonna lead to the same spot. So the fact that I keep moving forward makes it easier for me to predict where the Genshi will be. And then, it's like, I have the, my own style of like, close range flicks, and I see that 
I kind of miscalculated the spot where the head will be. Like, I know that the head will be going this way. Wait, you can't, you guys can't see that, but like, the head will be going, like, my crosshair is there, but the head will be going, like, here, you know, like, here, to this position. So, in order to get my crosshair there as fast as possible, I'm gonna flick as fast as possible, make, like, a really wide flick. It doesn't matter that I'm gonna flick past, because it's like, I have this, like, 50 millisecond window where I can release the arrow in the middle of the flick and it will hit because the hit head hitbox will be very huge since the Genji is up close. So it hits. And then look what happens. Like it's the same thing again. It's like it doesn't look like I'm hyped up. I'm trying to like stay calm. But that shot was fucking insane, not gonna lie. I'm thinking about, wow, okay, I hit that shot, that's so cool. It's gonna look even better on Fresh Nuts if I flick the Tracer as well. So meanwhile, what happens when I'm thinking about Fresh Nuts is, you know, I'm just gonna like do reactive shots and just flick my crosshair around like, like a potato. And then it's like I calm, calm myself down and it's like, okay, Tracer blinks and she's legit like almost inside of me, gotcha base. So that means that also the Tracer is not gonna keep moving back because Tracer wants to go behind me because Tracer doesn't wanna be in, li in like my view so that I don't hit her. So then I'm like, okay, Tracer can't move towards me to, to this direction and Tracer is not going to move to this direction so the only possibility is that the Tracer is going to move towards the wall or she's just going to go like keep going past me to flank me and that's like the most that's like the expected outcome is that Tracer is going to try to get behind me and you know since she just used her dash or blink she's gonna expect to be safe for like maybe half a second at least where the Tracer can just focus on aiming but what I do is I do the same style of flick again I do this like extremely fast flick and you know use use the since there's like this 50 millisecond time where I can release the shot and it will hit like release it anywhere between here and here and it's gonna hit because you also have to take into account that the tracer is moving back backwards so if I hit if I release it here it's gonna hit anyways because the tracer is so close up and the arrow has the hit has a hitbox it's not hit scan. Like a hit scan wouldn't probably hit here. But the projectile hitbox will still hit her in the forehead. Plus, since she's moving this way, that means that if I just keep moving my crosshair, like I release the arrow too late, then that gives the tracer more time to move backwards as well. So she will be like further back, so it further increases the technically the, the size of the hitbox. You know, it's because like basically it's a very inconsistent way of flicking, but since the target is so close up and moving to the direction where I'm flicking, it increases the available time in the middle of the flick that I have to release the arrow and it will hit anyways. And here I managed to stay calm. So instead of getting hyped up, I'm like, okay, I need to continue. So what I do is I immediately turn around. I immediately turn around instead of like 
go going like streamer mode, like oh my god, guys, I'm, I hit the shot. You know, it's like I I stay focused on the game to maximize my effectiveness. So at the moment I I know okay, it's like I hit that shot, and now it's time to do more for the team. So I turn around immediately and launch, and then. While I'm mid-air, I also start looking at the point to figure out where the targets are, since it was impossible to stay aware of what's happening on the point while also focusing on killing the tracer. So it's like I turn and I see a glimpse of the Zarya. I also have low HP, so I'm going, I'm, I decide to go for like, if someone is predicting where I'll be, they're going to think that I'm going to walk this way go to the stairway so instead I grab hold of the ledge so that I don't land onto the stairs because that's where people would predict and you see there's like so Anna is actually trying to hit me here from this angle let's put some sound in so it's like is there any sound cues So I heard that there's like Anna and Zarya alive, and I don't, I'm not sure if I know this, the Anna shooting at me here. But I know from the sounds that it's Anna and Zarya. And then I hear the Anna again. So I move my crosshair towards the sound. Like I hear the Anna in front of me. And then the Anna dies. So I start going for like the Saria here because that's the other target and I should be as optimal as possible. Get fucking uh, and old. Then, and then it's like uh, then I give in to my fresh nuts hype. And I completely like get surprised by this Lucio here. And then he gets away. <laughs> But yeah, that's, that's basically it. If you came here thinking that I'm gonna give you like some tips that will magically make you hit all your shots right away, that's not it. Like I'm trying to give you tools to improve your aim faster. Because there's no secret tip that suddenly turns you into an aim god. It's more about building your game sense and keeping your calm and, you know, just being aware about where the enemies are so that you don't react, so that you don't get surprised by where the enemies are. That way you reduce the time that it takes for you to line up a shot. And that's extremely important because, Whoa. let's say... Let's say you're in a situation where both of you are surprised about each other's oh. locations. So let me let me clean this up new. So here's a wall. Both of you just did like a fresh nuts play. So this is the enemy, it's, a, it's, a, it's the enemy, red is the enemy, and you're here. So the red guy, the enemy guy doesn't hear you, and you don't hear him. Or, you, you know, you, you hear him, but you ignore it because you're hyped about Fresh Nuts clips. So what happens is that you both go like this, and then you're both going to notice each other at the same time. So, when, when you notice the target, that's when you start readying your bow. And when the red guy notices you, that's when he starts thinking about how to dodge your shot and he's going to change his direction. But, if... If you heard him, if you focused on the sounds and you heard, and you didn't get surprised, like you expect the red guy to be here, then you can ready your arrow up 
and you can be like ready to shoot at the target when he peeks and this way you're gonna release the arrow at the same time or you're gonna release the arrow before the target can react and make an unpredictable move since you're reducing your reaction time to the minimum by just understanding based on the sound that there's a target here that's gonna come into your line of sight soon but if you both get surprised then it's a guessing game like is the is is he is your target gonna dodge this way like is is your target gonna continue going to this direction is your target gonna try to go to here is your target gonna like do some weird Rambo stuff and jump into your face like maybe it's an Anna that's gonna jump into melee range to nade you and herself so it's like you're probably at least not gonna expect her to jump towards you which means that you're probably gonna do a body shot and then the Anna is gonna throw a nade downwards while jumping and hit you and herself and then the Anna is almost back to full HP and you've lost 80 HP or is it 100 and then you're at a disadvantage but if you didn't get surprised you got you make yourself ready for the shot you expect the target to be here then it's gonna be easier to hit that shot. So yeah, that's the basis. To sum it up, basically, just be confident so that you don't have to rely on like reacting that much. You don't you don't wanna get surprised about anything. You wanna be aware of what's gonna happen by just thinking about what thinking about what's happening currently and what you're listening to and this way you maximize your chance of hitting shots but if you focus on trying to grade the shots in your head like okay this is gonna be a hard shot to hit then you're just wasting time and you're making it harder to hit plus you're building the negative mindset in your head that you're gonna miss the shot and then it's like just because you were thinking that it's a hard shot to miss and you probably miss it. Like, that's the only reason why you missed it. But since you do miss it when you think that you miss it, then next time you get into the same situation, you have built this reaction in your brain that, okay, well, that's a really hard shot to hit, so it's not gonna hit because, you know, it, it has never hit before. But if you manage to stay in this positive mindset instead and only focus on doing everything possible to hit that shot, then it's going to be a very high chance of hitting that shot and it's also going to increase your confidence. So it's basically your confidence level could be like, like, God, God or... trash so your confidence level is in the middle and then if you think that you're gonna miss that shot your confidence is gonna go to here if you miss it but if you think that you're gonna hit that shot and you hit it then your confidence is gonna go up and you're gonna start expecting more shots to hit, which stops you from getting into the negative mindset. But the same way it goes the other way around. If you think that you're gonna not hit that shot, then you're slowly gonna go to the trash tier. You're gonna go into the trash bin. You're gonna put your expectation of yourself down into the trash bin. I've gotten a lot of hate for being like egoistic, and like there's like this exclamation mark ego problem I got really sick of getting stuck in your team and got a little bit toxic I'll admit I'm usually not like that but this kind of fuck it I'm the best Hanzo in the world I won't switch and then the important part I won't switch 
I can kill Genji and Winston by myself. I have to believe that I can kill a Genji in order to have the maximum chance of killing the Genji. If I, if I don't believe that I can kill the Genji alone, then that means that I believe that I can't kill the Genji alone. Which means that instead of making sure, doing everything I can to line up that shot on the Genji, I'm gonna be thinking about how I can't kill that Genji. And that's gonna fuck up my aim. The same way, it's like, it, it was really frustrating to me back in the days when I had like over 50% of my games thrown. What happened was like, there could even be stuff like, it's like, I have a really good aim day, but then my teammates are gonna be in my ear the whole time trying to like, shit talk me, they're like, oh my god, we got other game in the team, we're gonna lose, I'm just gonna throw the game. So then I start focusing on the fact that we have people throwing, instead of trying to pop off. So I get distracted, and I miss shots, and then they're gonna be like, see, Argy doesn't hit any shots. And then I get more upset about that, because it's like, I miss those shots because I'm upset because of them. But they use it as justification to why they can be upset at me. So that's why you never should, like, if you're tilted, you take a break until you're not thinking about anything except the present moment. Until you're thinking about just what's happening in the game currently. And you're like, you should apply this to all aspects of life, you know, even, even if you want to get a girlfriend. If you think that, okay, well, I'm not gonna, like, she probably thinks that I'm creepy. That's gonna make you seem way more creepy. And it's gonna... Like, if you were confident and you're thinking about, well... Okay, this is a very attractive female individual. <clears throat> and then you notice something about her and you give her a compliment. And then you don't seem creepy. But if you're thinking about how you might seem creepy... You're not gonna even do that compliment, you're just gonna stand there quietly and seem creepy. So it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, it's the same way with with Hanzo, you know, that's that's it's just confidence is really important. If you think that you're boring to like if you if you have friends and you think that you're boring of a person, you think that everyone thinks that you are boring, you uh, you will act in the way that messages to people that you think you're boring. You're not at this, you're not of equal value as your friends. So then you're gonna like inject into your friend's brain the idea that you are actually a boring person just because you think that way. Like they might not think that you're boring. But the fact that you're thinking that you are boring makes them more likely to think that you're boring because you're, you know, you're injecting the idea into their own reality. <laughs> With girls, it's pay to win. I mean, obviously, it's like, ov not obviously, but it's the same way with like, with with what I just talked about on aiming with Hansel. Like, I have. Uh, a lot of experience, I have the best gear possible, or not the best gear possible, but I have really good, like, I, I can get almost consistent 240 FPS, I got the uh, 240 hertz monitor, I got, like, Logitech Wireless G Pro, so that's gonna maximize my chances of hitting those shots, it's gonna minimize the amount of like bad movements I do because I'm lagging or because I have a garbage mouse that spins out of control or something like that. It's the same way with, uh, let's say you're very attractive and rich and you talk to a girl, then it's, she's automatically gonna think 
that you're more attractive since you're physically attractive. I'm not like I'm. That sounds kind of bad. Like, like so most people don't care about money, but physical, like your looks, like it's just gonna it. It's gonna make it easier for you to make a good impression if you look good. Same way, it's gonna be easier to hit a shot if you have the best gear possible or if you have a lot of experience, if you have a lot of confidence. So, if you're very attractive, you're gonna need less confidence to seem attractive. It's gonna be easier to stay confident since the girl is gonna react more positively. So if if you go to talk to a girl and your mindset is the fact that uh, or the fact that the girls is pay to win game. If you're stuck on the mentality that you know it's easier to get a girlfriend if you're attractive, then you're not you're gonna be thinking about how it's not likely for that girl to be attracted to you. And thus you will seem less confident and thus you will seem seem less attractive. So it's like it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're shooting yourself in the foot by focusing on things that don't matter. You're focusing on things that are not in the present moment, like for example, that Anna got picked off, or that uh, you're not attractive as Tanner from high school. But if you don't think about that, if you just push it away from your mind, if you just focus on the fact that there's a girl in front of you that you find attractive, then you're gonna like read more stuff about her and then you're gonna know what to say like you could be like oh that's a very interesting alliance necklace you play wow too so suddenly you go from being like feeling defeated before you talk to her to like actually like having confidence and stuff just because you're like you're thinking about what's actually in front of you and what's happening instead of like how you have a disadvantage. It's the same thing with like even like motivation. Like one of my biggest problems is that like <clears throat> after I end stream I'm tired. But there's like I could edit videos but instead I'm thinking about how I'm tired and how I'm always tired after stream, and I never have the energy to do anything after the stream. But if I was actually just, like, if I just let that go, like, obviously I'm tired after streaming for six hours. Like, why do I need to think about that? Why, why is that the first thing that comes into my mind when I'm thinking about what to do after stream? And then I'm going to get stuck on this negative mindset. And instead of just doing what I was thinking about doing, like, okay, I, I should do, I should edit a video. I should like leave it at that and then start thinking about what, what kind of video I'm going to make, what kind of cool ideas I can come up with. But instead I'm like, hmm. I should make a video, but I'm tired like every day and I, I should, I don't know, I've ne I'm always just lazy after stream and damn, I wish I wasn't this lazy. It's, it's, and that, then I get stuck. But sometimes I'm like very happy, like streaming makes me happy and I, I end the stream happy. I'm like, oh my god, my community is so amazing. All these people talking into my chat, they're so so amazing and stuff. I get this dopamine flow. I feel great. And I forget about my anxieties and stuff. And then I'm like, t I get that thought pop up in my head that okay, I should make a video. 
and then it's like I forget to think about how I'm tired after a stream and shit like that. And then I just start making a video and then it's fun. So instead of thinking about how I'm always lazy and I'm so tired right now, I should get my head from the trash bin to the god bin where I'm like thinking about how fun it was last time, how fun it's always. So that way I don't get stuck and I keep like improving as a person. I keep doing stuff that's good for me instead of getting stuck on the trash bin thoughts. Like how I'm tired and how I never get shit done. So yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the guide. And apparently it's almost one hour long. So if you actually watched all of this, like I'm gonna sacrifice my my YouTube algorithm for this video. Like, it's gonna make my future videos get less views. Because this is such a long video and most people just tune in to watch me pop off. They don't, they don't care about, like, aiming guides and improving as, as a Hanzo player or just, like, a human being in general. So, if you made it all the way to the end, please leave a comment. I appreciate it a lot. It's gonna like you leaving a comment is gonna help me get out from this trash bin to the god bin, you know. Like it's if I see one person write that I watched this all the way to the end, like someone comments that, then I'm gonna think positive things about this video. But if no one comments, then I'm just gonna be thinking to myself like damn I shouldn't have made that video and now I sacrificed my YouTube algorithm and now when I release my next uh, unranked to GM no rapid fire video it's gonna get less views and it's gonna hurt my stream and blah 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 and then I'm gonna get stuck onto like trying to, to do mainstream content that I don't actually enjoy making and then it's gonna I'm gonna like go deeper into the trash bin and it's gonna go like there or something but yeah thank you so much for watching Leave a comment and like if you enjoy it and want to see more in the future. I'm streaming. I stream like 6 to 10 hours every single day. You can see when I stream under my under my stream page, twitch.tv slash arge. I have this cool thing here. Now li It's just now live because I'm live, but if I'm not live, it gives a countdown to when I go live. Also, I'm a lazy person. When I wake up, I always, like, it takes me a long time to get from bed because I think about how it always takes such a long time for me to get out of bed. So I always start, like, 15 minutes or 20 minutes late, so I apologize. But maybe, since I did this video, it motivates me as well to get up from bed the moment I wake up. Maybe I'll start on time. You know, like, maybe tune in just to see if I actually did start on time. And if I didn't... Come tell me to start on time so that I feel bad about starting late and then I will start in time. And, you know, go from the trash bin to the guard bin. But yeah. See you guys in the next video. Boom.